This week, we're joined by Tyler from Gimme Radio. Gimme Radio, you might know their channels, Gimme Metal, Gimme Country, and they're more than just a streaming radio station. They've put together this whole online environment that's all about engagement, social interaction, and commerce. You know, they've, they, they, they've taken the old stream and they've added life to it. They've allowed fans who are listening to engage with each other, artists to engage with the fans. You got to listen to this discussion with Tyler from Gimme Radio. Welcome to the Music Biz Weekly Podcast, founded in 2011 and with over 500 weekly episodes, where Michael Brandvold and Jay Gilbert, two longtime music industry pros, discuss the very latest trends, tools, and tactics that you need to succeed in this Build new- a stunning band website in minutes with Bandzoogle. Go to Bandzoogle.com to start your free 30-day trial and use the promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY to get 15% off the first year of any subscription. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. You got Michael here. I'm flying solo today. Jay had something come up at the last minute. Um, Before we get into a very cool discussion about radio, not old school radio, though, um, I want to just make a quick mention. Thank you to Bruce and everybody at HypeBot and Bands in Town for all you do to support us. And of course, thank you to our sponsors, uh, Bandzoogle.com. We want to make a quick mention to congratulate Bandzoogle members for surpassing $100 million in commission-free sales of music, merch, and tickets through their website. That's pretty impressive when you think of it. $100 million in sales by Bandzoogle artists, and it was all commission-free. Bandzoogle makes it really easy to build a stunning website and online store for your music in minutes. All the features you need are already built in, including dozens of fully customizable templates, tools to sell music, merch, and tickets commission-free, mailing list tools to grow your fan list and send newsletters, integrations with Bandcamp, SoundCloud, YouTube, Bands in Town, and more, so you can easily add your content from all your other online profiles. And of course, Bandzoogle's got amazing live tech support seven days a week from their musician-friendly team. Plans at Bandzoogle start at just $8.29 a month, and that includes hosting and your own free custom domain name. Music Biz Weekly podcast listeners, head over to bandzoogle.com, sign up, try it for free for 30 days. But when you register, use the promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY, that's all one word, and you'll save 15% off the first year of any subscription. That's bandzoogle.com, promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY. And of course, thank you to discmakers.com. We know it's a digital world, but there's still such an important role for physical media for today's musicians. Digital royalty payments can be so small that selling products like CDs, vinyl, even t-shirts online and at gigs has become such an important income generator. For every CD you sell at a gig, you might need roughly 3,000 streams to make the same amount of money, and that's a lot of streams. Our friends at Disc Makers are the place to go for your discs and other physical media, including vinyl, USB drives, and even t-shirts. So we got a great offer here. Head over to discmakers.com, place an order for 100 or more CDs, and when you check out, use the promo code FREEBIZ, and you're going to save up to $150 in shipping costs. This week, we're joined by Tyler from Gimme Radio. Gimme Radio, you might know their channels, Gimme Metal, Gimme Country, and they're more than just a streaming radio station. They've put together this whole online environment that's all about engagement, social interaction, and commerce. You know, they've, they, they, they've taken the old stream and they've added life to it. They've allowed fans who are listening to engage with each other, artists to engage with the fans. You got to listen to this discussion with Tyler from Gimme Radio. We'll see you at the end. Podcast.com. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate your support. We are really honored. I should say I'm really honored. Jay's out today. Um, I'm really honored to have Tyler Lenane joining us from Gimme Radio. Um, Tyler, why don't you give us, 
you know, as, as we love to say in the Bay Area, what's your elevator pitch? What's Gimme Radio all about? Uh, hey, Michael. Um, yeah, look, Gimme Radio is about um, building a new type of music experience online. You know, I have a long history of working in digital streaming music from earliest days in about 2006, uh, started at Rhapsody, then went to Mog, then Beats Music, then Apple Music. And, you know, I saw that there was this missing opportunity to reach the true music fans, the, the people that, you know, lived and breathed music, uh, went to, you know, live music all the time, bought merch, collected vinyl, um, and, and wanted to, you know, interact with other fans that had that same sort of mindset. You know, we saw a lot of that, that type of community music um, get pushed aside when people started moving over to digital, you know, the experience of being in a record store, the experience of waiting, you know, sleeping out to buy tickets in the old yep. days, or, you know, all those things are kind of gone. Right. Um, and so, you know, I started seeing in, in the, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago, people try to create social experiences. They all kind of failed miserably. Um, you know, they, people tried to put music on Facebook, but then realized nobody cares what your friend from fourth grade listens to. Um, and so there was this this opportunity to really build an experience for the true music fans. And that's where Gimme came out of. Um, and the way that we went about doing that, um, well, our thesis was the way to build for those fans um, is to build communities, right, of, 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 of like-minded um, music listeners and also the artists that they love. And to give them all the things that, you know, music fans want in one home, right? So whether that's being able to interact with other people that like that same kind of music, to have direct access to artists, to buy the fan collectibles and music merch all in, in, in one experience, ticketing, um, you know, it was combining that. And then we wanted to combine true music discovery, which I always believe is great radio, not the radio that we, you know, maybe not so much love today, but like when radio was great and, and you know, um, that's how you discovered music and you discovered it from trusted sources, which were, you know, trusted disc jockeys or, you know, um, we wanted to combine that element as well. And so what Gimme is, and I realized that as I'm talking this, you asked for an elevator pitch and I give you the exact nah, don't Don't worry, don't worry. So the elevator pitch is we build highly engaged communities for music fans, right? Um, and the way that we do that is building these communities where artists participate, fans participate. If you go on Gimme Metal or Gimme Country, if you go on the Gimme Metal app today, you will see there are thousands of people all over the world talking real time about the music that in most cases an artist has hand selected and is providing the stories in between those selections uh, that explain why this music is important, why it's influential. And, you know, and people are going there to, to interact with one another, interact with artists and really discover music that they wouldn't get anywhere else and then be able to express their fandom by purchasing exclusive vinyl records or merchandise or, you know, or even tip artists and support them in a, in a meaningful way. And so it's really a 360 experience for music fans that exists um really the only one that exists online that's actually also transacting with fans you know as as a kid growing up i and actually i should say even still to this day i've always loved radio as you said radio today isn't quite like what it used to be in the you know decades ago um but one of the things that radio has in my opinion, basically just shot themselves in the foot with is they've gotten rid of personality. And, and I've always said, and I've spoken at radio conventions and stuff like that, that radio can't compete at the level of music anymore. Meaning, you know, I can go on Spotify or you name the streaming service and they are going to literally have every single song I would want to hear. And a playlist can be put together in a matter of minutes. So radio stations can't compete with that. And they've, they've basically given up on it completely. But at the same time, what radio was great about was the personality of the DJs and, and getting to know that person and their love for the music they're playing, which they've also removed. It sounds like to me, Gimme Radio wants to bring that personality back to music. So it's not just a song. Because again, any person can go on any streaming service and find whatever song they want to hear and just listen to music. But personality is something that's really important. 
as you talked about, you've got these artists who are programming it. So the music is their personality. They're adding their stories to it. Are you finding that that is really something the, the listeners are loving? Yeah. I mean, we have an internal thing. We say that people come for the content and they stay for the community. Um, and, you know, content's an awful way to describe music, but it's unfortunately a way that people do. Um, but, you know, it's it's that personality you're talking about that is missing from the on-demand streaming services. And frankly, it's what sets apart even radio from one one radio to the next, right? I mean, I was talking to someone the other day and they said, very similar to what you're saying, but in a different way, which is, if you go to, I don't know, Los Angeles, there's the number one rock station in Los Angeles, and then there's the number two, and their market shares are vastly different. Now, some of that may be one has a bigger ad budget or this or that, but they're playing the same music, right? They're all playing the same playlist of 40 tracks of whatever yep. is your rock radio today, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers into this, into that. The reason why one is is better is because they have better programming and what programming is is really comes down to is what you're saying is personality right so i think people want to come to give me to hear you know dave catching from queens of the stone age talk about what it was like when he first heard judas priest when he was 18 years old right like they want to hear the story of dave mustaine talking about what it was like on the first megadeth tour they want to hear that storytelling and then you know they come for that and then they realize there's all these other people that also have that desire and need to like be part of this experience and they stay because there is this community of other people that doesn't exist anywhere else um you know in the earliest days there were times when we were just getting started when the stream would go down you know for an hour or two hours we we're trying to frantically figure out what's wrong and people wouldn't leave you know they just stay keep talking they keep talking and say hey i'm putting on this you know whatever metallica record on spotify right now oh i'll put it on too right they, they were there not because necessarily just the music, but it's that personality you're talking about. And it's this community, you know, um, another thing you hear people say is like, when you listen to radio, you're never alone. Right. And and I think that's really true. Right. There's this shared experience that you don't get when you have, you know, white earbuds in your ears by yourself, listening to a Spotify playlist that's been put together, you know, in some very antiseptic type way, I guess I'll put it in. Yeah. You know, it, it seems to me that that over the, the last decade or so, especially with with the prevalence of streaming, music has really been, for the most part, relegated to a background activity for many, many, many people. It's what you just put on while you're doing something else and you're not actively involved in the music, the experience of listening to music. And, and over the years, companies have tried to create um, an experience to get you involved. I, you know, I remember all the hype years ago about turntable.fm, you know, that was going to be the great thing. People were going to get involved. But I think what people learned was uh, it's a background experience for so many people. And, and what you're trying to do is create an experience. It seems to me that wants to pull the people into the music. It's not, you know, what you, Correct me if I'm wrong, but Gimme Radio doesn't necessarily want to be the background that you turn on while you're vacuuming the house today. You want Gimme Radio to be something that you step into and become involved in and engaging in the music listening experience. I mean, I think um, the answer to that is, is yes, but let's face it, right? There is kind of that 80-20 rule, like it's 20% of the people want to be super engaged, 80% something in the background is good enough, right? Um, maybe it's 30, 70, right? But like, there is this, this you, know, you know, there was this, there was this world that used to exist, which we started this conversation of, there were fans that stepped out for tickets that bought every piece of merch that came out that followed bands on tour. And then there was a the person who put on whatever radio station was the, you know, the class or the, the, the local station um, and had it in their car. And that was, that was good enough. And what, these places that I spent my whole career working at, like, you know, the Apple Musics of the world and the Rhapsodies. And what they did is they really focused on the person where that background music was good enough, right? They made mm -hmm. this experience very lean back, very much not social, um, and they ignored the people um, that wanted more, right? Because you can't really do much more than type in a record on your search box or a track and pull up right. and hit play. 
right? And so they ignored this whole human behavior of, of, of you know, people who were, were wanted more than just a search box and 50 million tracks. And, you know, that's bad from a music standpoint. It's bad because what you're really getting at is like all these services of commoditized music, right? Like Alexa, play me something relaxing. Like that's what people use Alexa for is to listen to classical music. They don't even know what it is, right? Yep. Spotify, put on my cool jazz dinner mix. Does anyone know it's a Miles Davis track from 1967, right? Like they don't know any of it. They know that it's a playlist that's kind of like mood related or activity related, or it's an Alexa type experience. And so, you know, that's bad for music fans. It's bad for the music industry. Um, you know, it's bad for the business overall, because those people are not learning they're not they, they, they've been come out music has been commoditized for them and they're not leaning in and they're not participating um on gimme 30 percent of our listeners do more than listen right they are chatting in the chat they're sharing they're buying something there's this engaged activity that's going on that you just you know that that's higher engagement than you'll see in most any other platform your first station correct me if i'm wrong was gimme metal um was that out of your own personal love for metal or did you recognize the metal fan base as a fan base that really wants to get engaged more than other genres um it's it's a bit of both right um one you know i came up my brother was was the i would say the the more card carrying metalhead in the house i was more the punk rock hardcore kid but there was a lot of crossover when i was sure. that age so i was very much familiar with the metal scene and loved a lot of those bands and a lot of the bands i loved you know sometimes they would play they'd go to a hardcore show and, and you know i'd see uh you know anyone from from you know exodus on the bill or or white zombie or whatever playing with agnostic front and the chrome mags whatever so there was a lot of a lot of crossover and then i worked for years in sort of the height of death metal at roadrunner records um and so i was there for like the releases of these big deicide records and death record and you know things like that so i, I really sort of always had my foot there um and then i saw that it was just this really vibrant community it was putting out really interesting music real fan loyalty passionate and nobody was paying attention to them at all um and so i felt like you know starting in metal was the right place to do it's something that that community needed I had a lot of experience in that world, you know, had a lot of love for the music and could build something really special. Um, you know, and so so that's kind of where it, it you know came out of both this opportunity that I saw wasn't being met, plus I had this background in the in the in the space. And then what what pushed you to start the second channel of Gimme Country? Did you feel like country had a similar fan devotion? Um so you know, we thought long and hard what would be the next step. And ultimately, I don't think it really matters. Um, I think that fan behavior is fan behavior. Um, there might just be, it's it's in slightly, it, it manifests itself in slightly different ways. And I'll, I'll give you an example of that in a minute. But we launched Give Me Country because, again, I never thought that was going to be the next one. And really, if you go and give me country, it's more Americana and alt country, which is, again, this very underserved sub-segment. Um, and so in the earliest days, of which we still are now, you know, we want to serve these underserved segments because, you know, BTS doesn't need our help. You know, uh, Cardi B doesn't need our help. We want to support artists that need exposure, that need right. support, right, um, and aren't getting it. So that was kind of, you know, we were like, okay, well, let's do country and show the world that fan behaviors aren't just peculiar to metal, that they exist on the other end of the spectrum. And that's true, right? And now what I said before is are there, they, they want to support artists, but they do do it in slightly different ways. The metal guys will buy five different vinyl variants of the metal record because they have that collector mentality. The Americana fans are more apt sometimes to tip an artist directly. Um, so there's different types of spending habits or behaviors, but they still want to support the genre that they love and the artists that they love. Now, one of the interesting um, features of, of I'm going to just use Gimme Metal as as the talking point here, because that's where I first got introduced to you guys and and became aware of you. But you've got a vinyl of the month club yep. that, you know, at first I was like, well, what the hell is a vinyl of the month club doing with a radio station? You know, at mm -hmm. first it wasn't like it was like, is this just oh, I need to do something to make some money because I'm not making money off a of radio. But as I started 
following what you're doing, it really made sense because it was the, the community. It was understanding, as you just said, metal fans want to go out and support their bands by buying that vinyl album, buying a collective piece, buying colored vinyl, buying a picture disc. Um, did you build your own vinyl of the month club from the ground up? Did you white label something? How did that come about and how do you manage that? Um, so we built our own um, and very much to what you're getting at. The reason was, look, we all know the way, way most radio, unless you're college radio or, you know, uh, NPR, you know, or maybe some other other areas like most radio makes money from advertising. Right. Um, yep. When we started, it was the last thing I was like, we are not going to be ad supported. There is no way that I want a music fan that's, you know, is is wants this great experience to go listen to you know, some, some, you know, Jeff Becerra from Possessed do a two hour show. And then in, be, in between every third song, you hear an ad for tires or diapers or something like that's just right. horrible, horrible experience. And so our goal was always to try to build this community and then have other revenue streams, right? Merchandise, e-commerce, digital subscriptions, subscribe to artists, you know, um, uh, services, subscribe, you know, tip art, all these different ways. And so when we started the metal um, community, we started thinking about how would we actually give back, right? Give something that fans want. And at the same time, it could be a revenue stream. And that's where the vinyl record of the month came in. Um, you know, I'm a huge vinyl collector, always have been. Um, it's it's a blessing and a curse. Like I love it, but I've also been carrying around thousands of records for yeah, don't 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 you love it when you've got to move and you're like, yeah, Christ, these things weigh a ton. <laughs> and, then I, and then I unpack and I'm like, I have three copies of this record. I bought it three different times. I don't even remember. Um, yeah, so so vinyl made a lot of sense. You know, we have good relationships with the labels and artists and management, so we had the ability to do that. Some of our, um, you know, and 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 so we really wanted to make something special that was for them you know um at the time you know there are others out there vinyl me please is a, is a huge you know vinyl subscription service but you know you might get a uh, nina simone record one month and then a wilco record the next month and you know i think right. i've seen maybe there's black sabbath is the only sort of metal one that i can think of i think they did a metal blade box set too at one point but you know it's like it's it's very it's it's more which is cool. It's not genre. It's genre agnostic, right? And and by design for the most part, other than I think they have a separate hip, hip hop one now and a country one. But um, we wanted to start one that was specific for metal fans. Um, and we wanted to make it really special. And so uh, that's why we did it, you know, and it's uh, how do you manage it? It's really hard, right? Like it's a lot of logistics and a lot of- I, I was going to say, I mean, I've, I've, I've spent years involved in e-commerce and fulfillment and selling artist merch online. And you know, it's, it's not easy. You, you know, just the commerce platform, just the warehousing, the fulfillment, the customer service. I mean, that's, that in itself is a business all unto itself. Yeah. And that is some of the tech, technical sort of secret sauce of Gimme is that we've built um, a platform where we're able to plug into using API technology with certain wholesalers and vendors. And um, so we have this whole network where we work with other suppliers in a way that I think is pretty unique um, and allows us to do a lot of what you're talking about and have it be more automated and more um, makes it possible, right? Uh, and, but it's still not easy. And, you know, look, you know, the US Postal Service hates vinyl records, right? Like. That, that someone should make yeah. that t-shirt because we get pictures every month of a vinyl record mailer, a cardboard mailer that's literally folded in half, pushed into a mailbox. Yeah. Yep. Right. <laughs> it's like, and you know, that's real money to us. Right. And it's, it's hard. So, and then, you know, there's all kinds of shipping issues with international shipping now with Brexit and the EU laws and taxes. It's, it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot of work, but you know, it's really cool. And when you see people, you know, take unboxing videos of the cool vinyl variant that we created and posted online. And, you know, it, it means something and it's, it's, it's awesome. Are you, I, I think I understood early on when you talked about this, are you to the point now where something like your vinyl of the month club, you're able to custom brand it. So it's like, if Dave Mustaine wanted his own vinyl of the month club, he, he, you could provide the back end and it would just be branded Dave Mustaine's vinyl of the month club. 
are you um, moving in that but, direction? I mean, we've talked about doing like DJ and artist specific um, record of the month type clubs or things like that. Um, so yes, we can do it, but you can imagine the complexities of running that would be, you know, I, I don't know if we're ready to go quite that deep. Um, you know, just as, as I'm sure a lot of your listeners know, I mean, the lead time, it's getting better, right? But as of a couple of months ago, it was, you know, anywhere from 12 to 16 months from when you first got your parts to the plant on when your yep. record was going to come to your warehouse, right? Like, so you're literally having to make business decisions out a year in advance. Um, and so it makes it really hard to do some of the things you're talking about because there's such long lead times. But my hope is, yes, it'll get shorter. I'd love to do more genre specific, you know, whether it's an Americana vinyl club or a death metal vinyl club or a, you know, an artist specific vinyl club, punk rock vinyl club. Like we could do a lot of those different things. We built the infrastructure. It's really just about the logistics side of the business that's that's really complicated. What what are some of the what are some of the exciting and different things you're doing on the radio side? And, you know, we've talked about you've got in chat rooms and engagement and vinyl a month club, but what, what separates gimme radio channels from, you know, the, the, the plethora of internet radio stations that are already out there? Yeah, I think, I think it goes back to something you had touched upon earlier is personality, right? Almost all of our shows, except for a few ones that we editorially create sort of like the what's hot now kind of shows um, are all created either by or with artists, right? Um, so you're really getting, you know, if you go on, give me this week, I mean, Rob Halford was on the show yesterday, right? Um, we've got obituary doing a guest show again this week. We've got full of hell was on this morning. Like we have all these different artists and their voices and their selections that are, you can't get that anywhere else. Right. Um, and I think people try, right. And there are products in market that are trying to do things very similar. Um, but they don't really have the, the stickiness because the community aspect isn't quite there. Um, so I think what we really wanna do is we wanna continue to expand to all genres, right, over time, but really also be, um, you know, a tastemaker in those places. Like it's not about just, you know, slapping on whatever the, you know, the newest, um, you know, metal tracks are of the week that Spotify will host. It's about putting the newest metal you know, or metalcore track next to a classic, right? And doing it in a way that feels real and is interesting and, you know, having the right stories in between. And then, you know, taking that, bringing it to other genres and then within genres. Um, and, and by the way, that's what we spent almost this past 2022 doing is that we can launch new genres and communities very quickly. Um, where it took us over a year to launch metal, it took us seven months to launch country. We can launch a new genre now in a matter of, you know, eight weeks. And, and it's not about the technology. It's about getting the content in and getting the right people to program it. Um, we can launch new stations within a genre within days, right? So we work with a company called Super Hi-Fi to create a new way to, for us to stand up stations within genres very, very fast. And so if you go on Gimme Metal today, you'll see that we're experimenting, right? We've got two sort of metal you know, flagship stations. We've got a metal core station. We're going to do a punk station. And I think as soon as next week, um, and we can start adding all these sort of sub genres and other flavors of the genre um, and, and, you know, expand and, and reach more, reach more less listeners. Right. Um, two years ago, if you were a fan of like things like August Burns Red or I Prevail or even like Slipknot and things like that, there wasn't a real place for you next to the more classic metal and death metal and sort of black metal stuff that Give Me Metal was playing most of the time. Now we have a metalcore station, right? We can stand up a hardcore station. And so we can, we can get more flavors of sort of the extreme music world into the experience. Are the, are the stations programmed by a real person? Is there a real person that's sitting there saying, I want to add this, let's drop this one out, reviewing submitted material. So there, you know, what, what I want to get to is you're not the, you know, the, the, the radio station that's all auto programmed by some blind, you know, we don't know who this person is in some corporate tower who's sending out all of the most popular music in their opinion. You've got a real person on the ground in your 
business reviewing everything. Yeah, that, that's 100% true. Um, I, would, I would even take it a step further. It's not only, you know, are there humans making the decision, but it's also even in some places where humans still quote make decisions, it's like they get to pick out of a list of 40. You know yeah, what I mean? And, right. And ours is completely like there was some stat like on our Americana station. It was something crazy. Like in a month we had, um, you know, whatever i can't remember the exact thing it was like four thousand tracks but by a thousand different artists like a thousand artists right like that would never exist on any sort of form of radio today now that's awesome right because you have artists making those decisions but then i mentioned we do have a couple of sort of what i'll call programmatic stations but they're not programmatic in that they're automated they're still vetted through you know our our, our music programming um, team, you know, um, and they're making those decisions. And the reason why we have those is so that we can highlight things that are happening that are important in the genre or that are topical or deserve certain certain merit, right? Or, or, or now, um, attention, I guess I should say. So it's kind of, um, you know, we don't have many of those programmatic stations, but they're there to balance all the other stations that are hosted by, by artists, mostly. As a radio station, are you... Are you similar to, you know, what we've grown up with traditional where it's like, oh, we want to we want to push these songs up into the, the high rotation, the middle rotation, the low rotation, or, or is that a metric you're not so concerned with because you're more concerned with engagement and, and community as opposed to, yeah, you know, like you said, let's narrow it down to the 40 most popular songs right now. That's what people care about you want a wider breadth of music, but a different metric? Yeah, I think that that's right. I mean, we have to be somewhat less so in metal, more in country, right? There's like Americana radio teams that are trying to get certain songs out there and they want us to work with them. And and so we want to do that. But there are often times when we'll say that's the wrong track of the record. We should be playing this one, right? When we're thinking about these programmatic um, shows that we do create, but to your point, we're taking a blend of like what we think is really exciting that's going on in metal or in Americana and blending that with stuff that's classic, stuff that's pretty experimental, you know, and, and we, we do have these, you know, quote, formulas of how we're programming to keep it exciting and to keep it interesting. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but. No, it, yeah, it does. It gives me an idea. I mean, again, I was just. I wanted to make sure I understood you guys are not just driven by the most popular songs right now. And let's give them all the airplay we can get. That's not the metric. You know, that's the old school, traditional terrestrial radio. I think, I think we pride ourselves on the opposite, right? We have gotten, we, there have been artists that have been signed to record deals because they were discovered on Gimme, right? There are artists that will tell you we were influential in their career, getting them on better tour slots or on festivals. Like that's real, right? Um, I can't prove it, but you know, there are often times when we start playing, especially in the Americana world, a track that I hear show up a month or two later on Sirius XM, right? Um, right. There are you know, we are sort of going out and trying to set what is exciting in metal. And that's why we publish our metal chart and our American chart every week. Um, and, you know, let people know what we think is interesting and exciting. Right. And some of that's inbound from the DJs that we have that are, are playing. We're like, oh, that's cool. They're 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 into that. And people are checking this out. And then it's, you know, our team and the metal side is mostly a guy named Brian Turner. Brian Turner has a career coming from a freeform FM radio station in the New York area called WFMU. Um, he is a guy that can know, you know, what's happening in all different genres and that's exciting and figure out who are the right people to get to work with us to, you know, really be, um, be that takes maker in, in those, in those areas. What, what are the future plans for Gimme Radio besides and, and, and maybe you can't reveal this. Besides just launching a new genre, what are you working towards to, again, take this r concept of radio to a whole different level and experience that, it, you know, you're not going to get if you listen to Apple One Radio or, you know, you hit the radio button on Spotify and it's like, well, it's not a radio. That's just, it's just a playlist. Yeah. What's next? I mean 
I think I think what you're getting at is that you know the the, the special the specialness of Gimme, you know, um, it's something we're very much aware of. Why these metal fans, Americana fans, come every single day to listen, and you know, we've got to be very careful as we scale that we maintain that sort of authenticity and that and and that's going to be challenging, right? Like you can't you, you you've got to people people will be able to sort of suss it out very quickly if it's not authentic, right? Right. So we've got to, we've got to keep that. I think for Gimme, yes, it's expansion into those other genres and keeping that that authentic field so that we can build communities. Um, and for me, what I'd like to see and what we talk a lot about is how can we support artists better, right? And so when you go out, when we learned a lot during the pandemic and we quickly rolled out a, a tip jar feature for artists and people made significant amounts of money. Like there are artists who made over uh, $40,000 in uh, wow. you know, during, during that time period getting five and ten dollar tips directly from from artists um you know times are a little different right people then were supporting because they couldn't play live and and but what we learned is if there's a, a reason for fans to support the artists they love they will support them um what you see in the industry right now whether it's spotify or this guy or that guy like there's a lot of talk about things like creator economy right and like and giving artists more ways to make money and what that usually means are more tools, more dashboards, artists having to make more Spotify playlists, you know, do more on social media, get a TikTok account and make stupid short form video, like all these things. And, and what we have learned is that like, A, artists are fatigued by that stuff, right? And they're, yep. they're and, you know, especially when you're talking to like metal bands and, and you know, even like alternative country, or even country artists, like, you know, they didn't become they don't learn how to play guitar so they can make TikTok videos, right? They, they, they want to play music. Right. So. And so what I think needs to happen is, is somebody, and in, in, this is what we're working towards, creates a world where when you're a bass player in metal band or, you know, X or whatever, um, there's a community that's supporting you even while you sleep, right? Like you should, there should be a world where you wake up, that artist wakes up every morning and opens up their gimme account and says, oh, you know, my band sold six T-shirts. We sold 40 tickets to the show, uh, $180 in tips and sold 45 vinyl records, right? Like, cool. And I can pop in there when I want. I can engage. I can create shows with Gimme when I want. But there's this ongoing machine that is helping supporting artists in meaningful ways, not just fractions of the penny and not just, you know, asking them to do all this other stuff of what they're not really that's not what the, their job is really, you know? And I think we can do that. We, we've shown we can do that. Um, we just got to build more. Um, we've got to build our platform to support that better. So the question I know all of the musicians listening are, are asking right now are like, how do I get my music into Gimme? And how do I get more involved in Gimme beyond just, would you play my track? Meaning, would I have the possibility of doing a show? Could I Absolutely. could I get my merchandise in and sold online? Can I can I, you know, I don't have a record deal, but I do have some vinyl here. Can we provide vinyl? How do artists get involved? Yeah, I mean, they can reach out to music at me radio.com anytime, right? And and you know, we get so much inbound um attention from artists and artist management and labels right like you know i say like in the metal side other than metallica you know ozzy and maybe a handful of others like just about every metal act in the in the world has at some time participated as either hosting a show or being interviewed on the show on gimme right like full stop right from from the most underground finnish black metal band to dave mustaine of megadeth they have all had a voice on gimme um we work with labels and artists all day long to, to, to support them having those experiences. So they certainly can reach out to us on that. And they do. Um, and then I think where we need to be better and we, and this is what we're going to build are more ways for them to be able to transact directly with their fans, right? Like today people can tip them, you know, they should be able to subscribe to those artists. They should be able to, there should be more ways for us to be able to work directly with artists for merchandising opportunities. And those are the things that we're working on when I say, you know, building a platform where artists can earn more while they sleep. Do you have a, a mechanism for an artist who has a presence, might be getting some airplay, to actually get the fan information of who's listening to them? Meaning, can I, can I have my listeners 
join uh, you know, an email list? Can they provide me with contact information so I can message them, even if it's just within the gimme world? Yeah. That, so you know, and, and, and what I'm thinking of is, is kind of what Bands in Town does when, when you, know, you follow an artist on Bands in Town for tour dates, the artist can message all of those trackers. Yeah. Um, so you're hitting a, a, I wouldn't say Sorner, but you know, a, a, an active one in the sense of um, we work with artists and give them a lot of that data manually today. It's not automated. We haven't built the, you know, the tool that's that the dashboard they, they yeah. have, but they've been around for, for a lot longer. Um, but that's, that's the idea. Right. Um, but what we have done is also run specific campaigns with artists like contests and things. And, you know, you have to be very clear, um, for you know privacy reasons that the email will also be shared with the artist and we do that right, and we right. create experiences where hey uh, metal artist or, or you know country artist we did a guitar sign giveaway and you have 25,000 new email addresses right because we've been very clear that we're, that's how we're doing it but the automated process like that's kind of what comes next okay all right um you know this this all I mean give me metals excited me since the day I first found it and I love that you're, I love your whole attitude of where you want to take this and how you want to support this, support the artist through this. And, and at the end of the day, you're just not another streaming service. You know, yeah. we, we, we've gotten to the point now where, and Jay and I have said this many times on the show, streaming services for the most part are all identical. We've got the same catalog of music. So it's not the music that makes anything different or better. It's the, it's the experience, it's the tools, it's what you put around that music that's going to make your platform stand out from a competitor's platform. And Kimmy's really gone all into the social aspect is what it yeah. seems to be to me. And that's missing on all the other streaming platforms. Yep. No, I mean, 100%. I appreciate that, you know, you calling that out. I mean, it's it's very much, like I said at the beginning, that's that's our, you know, that's the elevator pitch, right? It's high engaged communities of music fans. Um, and the community is a big part of that. And that's that social aspect that you're talking about. Um, you know, we talk to those guys all the time, whether it's the, you know, all the, the big streaming services, they come around, they like to see what we're doing. And it's like, they're just not, they haven't been able to really figure out how to do this in meaningful ways for, for their users, right? That's not their core business. They are utilities, right? They are, they are, uh, you know, you pay your, your, your Netflix bill, you pay your Spotify bill and you've got access to, you know, all this, all the music in the world, but that's not what everybody wants or what everybody needs. Right. And there's this very core element in this, this, this itch that's not being scratched by just a utility, by just the pipe delivering, music um and that's where we we hope that we can continue to grow in that in that lane and, and really be this not just for metal fa fans but you know punk fans and world music fans and jazz fans like that's my dream is to like create a really awesome experience for these users right like what is the equivalent for the punk rock fan of maximum rock and roll online i don't know if, if there is right what is the mojo magazine for the classic rock fan right like those that and, and that doesn't even have that sort of community element, but it still was something you waited for because you were you were you wanted to be interacting with the genre, right. and and that's that is one hundred percent missing from other digital experiences. Yeah, it's, it seems it seems like a lot of the other digital services are just about consumption. Just consume as much music as you can, over and over and over again, because um, you know if if you're quote an old timer in the streaming world. Remember, Spotify, when it first launched, had a social aspect to it where you could message other users, you could see what other users were were listening to, and that's all been stripped out. I mean, there's just nothing there, and and maybe this dates myself, but music is a social experience, in my opinion. It, it it always has been. It's it's something you get together with friends and you talk about a new album, a new tour, a new track. Um, you know, hey, you got to listen to this band I just found out. I mean, I'm a firm believer in the the person who is going to influence your music tastes 
are more likely your friends who have grown up listening to the same style of music as you. I will trust their opinion much more than I will trust a faceless editorial playlist that I have no idea who's behind it. Right. And, and look, you, you've, everything you said is 100% true. Um, and I agree with it. Um, when you started about that last piece part saying that it's about consumption, 100%. I mean, that's the business model of Spotify and Apple Music, right? And not only to consume, consume, but consume these select artists over and over and over and over and over again. Whole different long show we could do about why that's the case, why the, the deals that those services have with the major labels and the advances and the minimum guarantees attached to those deals necessitate that those artists get played or else they're losing their investment because they just paid major label X hundreds of, you know, dozens of hundreds of millions of dollars to have that content. They better well make sure it gets played. Right. Yep. Um, that's why the other artists don't, don't matter. Right. Let's be honest. And yes, sheer volume, finally independent artists are making money, some money from this. Um, but you know, an artist making $40,000 on gimme, who has less than 100,000 followers on Spotify, I guarantee they're not making that from that streaming service. I know they're not, right? Um, and there has to be, you know, music is not just for the top 1% of artists, right? There is a huge number of what we'll call the middle class, right? Of, of all these bands that need revenue streams that aren't given to them anymore. I know, and it's really hard. Yes, you can tour. Yes, you can do, but you know, there's a whole bunch of issues with that, those today that didn't exist 20 years ago, right? Um, so I don't know. I, I think that everything you're saying is true and it's true by design, right? Like that is yes. how those business yep. models work. That's yeah, you know, the, the the consumer, the fan doesn't realize that that's the whole plan and the intention. Well, and, 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 and to, to your point, like when you say things like music's about social and listening to records, like, you know, to some people, you do sound very nostalgic, right? They'll say, ah, oh, no, yeah. that's, not, that's not the way it works. And, oh, these kids today, like nobody cares about genres and they don't care about being a member of the tribe and they don't care about this. And I'm like, I call bullshit on all of it, right? Because yep. with this, it's, there's no difference, right? The fact that Fleetwood Mac is popular because of TikTok again for, you know, a song and then it gets played next to, uh, you know, a huge hit by Cardi B or whatever, like people are like, oh, that shows that, you know, Gen Z doesn't care about genres. It's like, no, it doesn't. You know, when I was in, you know, 12 years old, you heard a Michael Jackson song into a Def Leppard track on the radio, yep. right? Into a Dexy's Midnight Runner track, into a Clash song or whatever. Like, it didn't matter. The genres were still about what was popular. Popular has never been genre specific. It's top 40, right? That doesn't mean that there aren't, you know, people that are still interested in listening to what's going on in punk rock or jazz today or metal, right? Like, they do. And it's still there and it's still a community of people. And like, we somehow believe that, you know, because all we get on Spotify are my gym workout mix and my chill out dinner party mix that people don't care about genres. And I, don't, I just don't believe that that's true. No, I, I, I completely agree. I've got a nine-year-old daughter and I watch her discover music obviously in a completely different way than i did it's all through video games and youtube videos and stuff like that but it's a social experience because she'll be she'll be playing a game online with her friend and there's they don't realize it but they're singing these songs as they're playing and i'm just yeah, like really, that's the crazy. social you don't you may not realize it but that's what's going oh. on Look, my like I'm looking behind you. I see all this Kiss, um, you know, platinum records and, and awards, you know. So I have a nine year old and a six year old son as well, and they played some game where you know I was made for loving you is in 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 the game, and right? and they're like all of a sudden they're really into this song, and I'm like, ah, you shouldn't be listening to Dynasty. You should be listening to these records over here, right? right? And like next thing you know, they're listening to you know next step, you know, a little bit more, you know, easy to handle. You know, they're listening to Shout It Out Loud, right? And I'm like, that's crazy that they're singing this song, right? And then the other day they had a sleepover and they're they put it on Dress to Kill, and I'm like, that's really insane. That yep. Uh, for a nine-year-old boy who heard uh, the disco track, I was, you know, ostensibly the, the disco right, disco right, right, on a video game, and then ended up listening to the second record, and I'm listening to, you know, uh, ladies and waiting of them <laughs> yeah. listening to the song, and I'm like, 
that's crazy, right? And that's discovery, yep. right? And that, that's that, discovery. That that journey isn't it doesn't seem to happen from that playlist, or if it happens from humans, or it happens, you know, the reason it happens is those kids were all playing that video game together, right? And they heard yes. that song and they and that 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 bond that they all have. One of the kids said he went to an antique store and bought a kiss poster the other day. <laughs> it's crazy, right? I know. So, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it 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 is. I I you know, the one time I was really laughing, you know, I I I'm not trying to direct my daughter into any sort of music. Just discover music. That's all I care about. Whatever you want, you can discover it. She was playing uh, Roblox with her friend, and they were both singing Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. I'm just right. sitting here going, I'm right. like, oh, my gosh. You know, how did they discover that tune? I mean, so here, how do you, you know. You would never get it in another. I mean, maybe once they stumbled upon the 80s channel on Pandora or something, right? Um but I'll give you another sort of even deeper slice into that. Um, I was in a, I had to go to a meeting to just talk about Gimme with, with Warner Music. Um, and I had our guys, I was like, what's the number one quote, listen to Warner Music track on Gimme? And so they pulled all, you know, the data of like how many people have been on the service listening to a track that was with from a Warner affiliated label or whatever. And I went into this meeting and I said, hey, um, what do you think the number one listen to Warner Music song is on Gimme? And everyone, in the, you know, was like, oh, I don't know, maybe some Slipknot track because Roadrunner is Warner, or maybe it's this, you know, Black Sabbath song. It is. And the number one listen to song was a 1973 track by Montrose, right? Um, and and yep. the reason is because Dave Mustaine played it, Dave Ketching played it, um, a couple other DJs played it. And so a lot of people heard that song. That's about as far from frontline catalog as you possibly can get. Yep. And you're never going to hear that song unless someone that you love, like a Dave Mustaine or a video game that you follow or something is going to expose you to that. You know, and so I think we forget like how much rich music is still out there that people would really love if they were exposed to it in ways that creates connections with them. It, 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 exactly. It, it To me, it all goes back to you know, like you said, I might sound like, you know, the grandpa on the front porch. Oh, music's a social experience. Well, that's because when I was growing up as a kid, you know, hey, we didn't have video games. We didn't have the Internet. We didn't have all this stuff. So music was truly one of the handful of things you could do with your friends. That still exists. It's just not out in the forefront like it used to be. But right. I think kids are still being very social about the music they they are singing, listening to, you know, and they're just in a fortunate way, maybe they're they're able to discover this music in so many different avenues than we could when we were younger. It, it you know, music is everywhere. And and I think platforms like Gimme that take the music but add more to it are going to help that discovery process along. Because like you said, just listening to a playlist on Spotify, you might hear a song and go, oh, that's a catchy song, but there's nothing to take you anywhere else there. There's nothing else to do when you hear that, unless you consciously go, hold on, let me pause, let me add that to my playlist, let me go search for this. That's all missing in these yeah. other platforms. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's the storytelling uh, content. Yep. So Tyler, where can, uh, where can people find out more about Gimme, your channels, you I, reach out to you guys? Yeah. So music at gimme radio.com is the email for music. Um, and then just go download. It's free. The metal app is the, you know, gimme metal and the, the Americana alt country country one is gimme country. Um, go to download it for free and check it out. You know, the websites are, are not as full featured and don't have the multiple channels and all that. It's, that's, it's all really app based, but you know, please go, go check it out and, and let us know what you think. Awesome. Tyler. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, Gimme gets a thumbs up from me because it is, it's very cool, people. It's very cool. Well, thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me. And uh, thanks to all your listeners for checking out Gimme. You bet. Visit discmakers.com to place an order for 100 or more CDs. And when you check out, use promo code FREEBIZ and get free shipping up to a one. You know, as I said, thumbs up to what, what Gimme Radio is doing. Um, check out Gimme Country. Check out Gimme Metal. 
this is this is much more than just streaming music it's a great experience of listening to music and hanging out with like-minded fans um so if you're a fan check it out if you're an artist reach out to gimme um see what you can do with them get your music added see if there's other opportunities to get in there and and, and promote your music um i love that they're just they understand that music is more than just a song and uh, that's so important. I think we've always said on this show, it's about the experience. It's not just about the music. Um, so before we wrap up, big shout out and thanks to Bruce and everybody at HypeBot and Bands in Town for all you do to support us. And of course, to our sponsors, thank you to Bandzoogle.com and DiscMakers.com. If you've got a product, service, website, and you're looking to reach an audience of uh, musicians, industry people check us out music biz weekly podcast we'll be happy to chat with you about a sponsorship package otherwise that's it see everybody next week and industry professionals listen to the music biz weekly podcast if you have a product or service and would like to reach this audience get in touch with michael or jay to discuss sponsorship this opportunities. for music biz weekly provided by larry davis and by jessica mars voice.com